Hello, uh, today I'm going to show you how to create a civil surface using Qubit in conjunction with a point cloud directly inside of Civil 3D. Uh, before, there were ways to create a surface directly from a point cloud, and one of the biggest problems is that it would actually be too heavy of a surface and have too many points uh, to calculate, and it would slow Civil 3D down quite a bit. Uh, and that was even for just a small to medium size area of a point cloud. Uh, we have a new tool called Planar Analysis that actually allows you to create a grid of points to use for a surface. Uh, it makes them lightweight. It makes it to where you can cover a larger area. Uh, and it also does automatic filtering based on deviation from any specific plane. Now, uh, I have a point cloud here brought in from uh, from recap and one thing that I recommend doing is a UCS move and then clicking somewhere on the surface that you are um, trying to capture the reason for this uh, you'll see in the next step but essentially you're setting your your level uh, to be plus or minus uh, in comparison to so once you've done that, what you want to do is go to the modeling section of a qubit ribbon. And in the bottom right, you're going to see plane analysis. So what we're going to do here uh, is choose the XY option. And if you have any other results chosen, uh, go ahead and uncheck them. And we're only focusing on grid of points. Now, closed gaps here will actually take care of gaps in data and shadows and things like that. But to be honest, you don't have to worry about it because creating a civil surface will also do this for you. So I just leave it unchecked. Uh, so what we need to do now is go to the settings. And from here, uh, we have a few very important settings. Uh, first of all, if you have unlimited distance checked, make sure you uncheck it. And we're going to set the distance to your plus or minus threshold. And what I mean by that is it will only uh, collect points that are within this distance from your current UCS. So if you can see here in the point cloud, it's got structural, piping, building elements, things like this. If I put the value to 12 or 6 or something like that, it will actually remove any objects that are this height uh, or above. So I'll keep this value at 12. This exaggerated scale factor does not play a role in here, so just make sure it's set to 1. And then we have grid size. Now the grid size is essentially saying at each one of these x and y distances, I want to plot a point. So here what I've done is, is made it 5 feet. You also get a little counter here that will show you how many points will be collected. Now keep in mind this number is only going off of the unlimited distance value so since we've given it a distance value we will have fewer points than this. The sampling method also plays a huge role here. Uh, we have four options. Uh, for average it's going to take every point within this five foot by five foot grid and then try to find an average elevation. Uh, maximum will be high point, minimum would be low point, and nearest would be the point that's closest to the, uh, the ground zero or, or current UCS. So essentially if you would like to have a point that is on the surface of concrete or the ground, uh, then I recommend using nearest. So I'll set that to nearest, say OK. If it gives you this message, that's fine. You can say yes, it's actually not going to be that slow. It may take 30 seconds, maybe one minute, uh, but not very slow at all. And once you're ready, uh, we're going to click Start. And what it's going to do is start counting the points, uh, and then it's going to start plotting them using the settings that we provided. Okay, so it went and plotted these points. And just to give you an idea, uh, this current point cloud is about, uh, I believe, 40 scans, uh, quite a few points, um, somewhere around 600 to 800 million. Um, now, if I turn off the cloud, you'll see 
that all of these points are restricted to plus or minus 12 inches. And it also, you know, removed points that were part of any object taller than 12 inches. So it's not like it just chopped them off 12 inches up the side of the building. It actually removed those points because it was part of a structure that was taller than 12 uh, inches. Now, uh, there's one final step here because we don't want to have a rectangular grid or something like that. Um, you can choo choose any point and you can either right click and, sorry, there we go. You can either right click and choose select similar. Uh, if you don't have that option, then just type select similar on your command line. And all that's going to do is, is make sure to select all the points and nothing else. Uh, from there, what we're going to do is right click, choose quick select. Then we're going to go down here to the position Z property. Make sure it says equals and then a value of zero. And we want to include it in a new selection set. So if you say OK, you'll see that certain points are highlighted. And then you simply hit your delete key. And it is essentially removing all empty points. Uh, so all of those points that were plotted at that location were basically um, gaps in data or something like that. In a future release, we'll actually have that as an option to do that automatically. But even without that, you still have a very easy method of, of doing this. Okay, so now we have these points. And now all we need to do is add them to a point group and then add those to a surface. Now to do that, uh, we want to go to our home ribbon. And we have a create group uh, section here. Now um, we want to go to points. And before we actually create the point group, I recommend going to point creation tools and then expanding the points creation section. The reason for that is you want to make sure that prompt for descriptions is set to none. I believe by default it is set to manual. And if you have it like this, the next step will essentially ask you for a description for every single point. That is very tedious. Even if you held down your enter key and just went through them as fast as possible, it would still take 10, 15, 20 minutes. So make sure you have that set to none before doing the next step. Okay, so I'll close this. We'll go back to create group, go to points, and then we're going to say convert AutoCAD points. Now from this, all you need to do is just choose the points, hit enter. You should see them disappear if it did it correctly, and then hit enter again to end the command. At that point, we have a new point group. And I'll show you here, if you go to your tool space in Civil, and I'll expand this a little bit so we can see it better. So you'll see here in point groups, we now have all points, and all we need to do, to do now is, is right click on surfaces, say create surface and then we're going to just say OK just to get a surface in here. Now you should see we have a new surface. Go ahead and expand that surface. Go down to definition and you should see point group as an option. You just right click, add, choose all points, say OK and just like that you've got yourself a surface inside of Civil and for anyone that's used uh, this feature directly from a point cloud in the past you'll notice that I am flying through my civil without any slowdown problems. It is not a heavy surface at all. Now from here, you know, it's, it's really just civil 3D tools to adjust the, the appearance the way you need. All you'd have to do is right click on the surface name, edit surface style or surface properties, uh, and then create any um, visual output you, you need. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Um, it's just another example of uh, Qubit being able to aid in some of the more common needs uh, of some of our uh, different genres and different industries. If you have any questions, let us know. If you have any ideas for other ways that we can help, uh, let us know as well. Thank you.